I'm Brian. I'm part of the senior group here at Delta, and I just wanted to share with you guys a story of how putting my trust in God has really benefited me and what it's done in my life. So my middle school years and through my freshman year, I was at a very low point. I really struggled to love myself and what I brought to the table when it came to friendships and relationships. I hated the way I looked, I hated the way I dressed, I hated the way I laughed, the way I acted around people. I pretty much hated everything about myself. I was very insecure and just upset and confused as to why I felt that way. I would get really mad when people would leave my life. I would get mad when a boy would break up with me. I would get frustrated and confused as to why people didn't want to include me in things or why they treated me a certain way. And I just remember the end of my freshman year hitting a breaking point where it was like, I can't go on like this. I cannot feel this way the rest of my life and live every day so concerned about what everyone else thinks of me. And I just remember in that moment deciding that, you know what? I just need to trust God because at the end of the day, he has my whole life laid out in front of him. He knows what's gonna happen throughout my whole life from the day I was born to the day I die. And putting my trust in him was the best thing I've ever done because fast forward to senior year, I am completely in love with myself. I understand now that God brings people into my life for a reason and sometimes they stay and sometimes you don't and it's either a blessing or a lesson and I've really just learned that people come and go. Relationships they happen here and there they come and go too but at the end of the day you just have to trust that he's doing it all for a reason he loves each and every one of us but he's doing things in your life for a reason and i can say now that i love myself i love what i bring to the table in friendships i love what i bring to the table in relationships and sometimes those friendships and relationships don't work out but I've learned that as long as I acted how I, how I do on a normal basis, if I embraced myself and allowed someone to see the real me, then I did everything right. And all I can do is love myself and understand that God took that person out of my life for a reason. And I just really hope you all learn to trust him too. Because yes, he has your life laid out, planned out from the day you are born to the day you die in front of him. And he is going to do amazing things in your life. He is, he has so many amazing plans for each and every single one of you. And I really, really pray that each and every one of you learn to put your trust in him because he is amazing. What's up, Delta family? Listen, this week, we're going to be diving into a new story. I know last week we got a chance to recap about our youth night and how amazing that was. I'm hoping you thought it was amazing, like how I thought it was amazing. But if you didn't, I don't know, tell us what we can do to make it better next time. But look, I really, really, really hope that our first youth night was a blessing to you. As we talked about Goliath and what those Goliaths may be, I hope that you got a chance to talk amongst your small groups and really dive into what that may look like for you and how we continue to overcome those small or big Goliaths in our life. Now, this week, we're going to be talking about a different biblical character who can somewhat relate to David, but his story is a little different because his childhood was stripped from him at a very early age and he was sold into slavery. And he, then he became a servant. 
And then his life just began to take its course according to the plan that God had for him. His name is Joseph. So you guys going to have a video to kind of give you a little short synopsis of what Joseph went through, his story, and a little background behind him. But I don't want you guys this week just to watch it as if it was just some story that's distant from your life. Now, you may not be able to relate to Joseph being in a pit or sold into slavery or ruling in Egypt, some shape, form, or fashion. But what you can relate to is this, that you're young and that you have your struggles. Like Joseph felt neglected by his siblings, not his parents, but his siblings. You may have struggled with that. You may have some way, somehow found yourself isolated and alone around people. You know, sometimes we have to look at these biblical characters, not so much as a distant story. And it's a story that we can't connect with or relate to, but somebody that could be a lot like us. So I want you to, as you watch these videos, as you guys dive deeper into the scriptures and your small groups, I want you to really take advantage of this opportunity to study Joseph's life and see how you find yourself in it. Because I can guarantee you this. If you look at it from this lens, hey, I can see myself in his shoes. That means you allow God to shape and mold how you view your struggles at an early age. You shape and mold your mind to say, look, God, whatever I have to go through, I know I'm young and I know a lot of people don't understand, but you do and I can run to you. And with that, just sincere heart, God can really do a lot with that. So this. So Jacob goes on from there to have 12 sons, big family. But Jacob loves his 11th son, Joseph, way more than all the others. And so he gives him the special technicolor dream coat. And his brothers, because of this, come to hate him. So much so that they plan on killing him. But they don't. They instead just sell him as a slave down in Egypt. Now, while in Egypt, through this crazy series of events, Joseph goes from being in a prison cell to becoming the second in command there. And so later on, the the whole Middle East falls into this food shortage. And Joseph's brothers, they come down to Egypt looking for food. And then when they get there, who should they find as the ruler of the whole land? It's Joseph, that guy they sold into slavery. But he actually saves them from starving to death. And so here you have it. These are the great-grandchildren of Abraham who have done this heinous act to their brother, But God has transformed their evil into something good. And that's exactly what Joseph says here in the last paragraph of the entire book. He says, you guys planned all of this for evil, but God planned it for good to save people's lives. So I want you to think about this. Everything that happened to Joseph, God used it to prepare him, but also his loved ones for what he had in mind for them. See, if Joseph never went through all the things that he went through, as you guys have saw in the video that we showed you, he would have never been able to save his family from famine. So, I know it's kind of hard to think about it like this sometimes, but as you guys dive into a discussion about the life of Joseph, I want you to think about in what areas of your life could God be using to do just what he did with Joseph, to prepare your family for some great thing. It may not be a famine, but it may be something. So I want you to think about that. All right? I love you guys. See you soon.